You are welcome to yet another episode of LFN What's Your Say? The number one listening show where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring R. Kelly. Real name Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. Things have been quickly falling apart for the malicious government prosecution, and for the two trial judges who prevailed over the R. Kelly trials in New York and later on in Chicago, as attorney Jennifer Bonjean exposes the cracks in the two convictions that saw R. Kelly overcharged and issued two mega sentences longer than what even some murderers get. The 30-year sentence which was issued by the Brooklyn Federal Court Judge Ann Donnelly has for long remained questionable, leaving people wondering why she would do such a thing, especially given the circumstances dominated by a clear lack of evidence to prove he committed the alleged crimes beyond reasonable doubt. Just how could she issue a sentence equivalent to three decades behind bars, and leave no window for R. Kelly to be released on probation anywhere before the 30 years have elapsed? Inconsiderate Judge Ann Donnelly specifically added that R. Kelly is only due for supervised release after the 30 years have been fully served, leaving supporters and fans of R. Kelly in shock. No one expected such a harsh sentence that was nowhere in alignment with the sentencing guidelines. Not long after the disturbing New York trial came the one in Chicago which was presided over by 86-year-old federal judge Harry Leinenweber. Because the Chicago jury had been a lot more sensitized about the dynamics of the case against R. Kelly, they were less biased and would even have issued all innocent verdicts on the enticement counts if it hadn't been for the federal judge to interfere with their work and mislead them. Remember during the jury deliberations, one juror raised their hand and asked the judge what they should do where R. Kelly was not guilty of coercion, yet the count read enticed and coerced. Careless Judge Leinenweber was quick to say for as long as they felt he could have been guilty on one thing, then he is guilty for the entire count. This was not proper reasoning from a federal judge who according to attorney Jennifer Bonjean could have declared a mistrial on that particular count. Even after all this rigging, R. Kelly still managed to be found not guilty on the majority of the Chicago counts, a sign he could have beaten the entire case given a fair chance like everyone else. And when it finally came to the sentencing like the New York judge, Harry Line and Weber also went way overboard issuing an out-of-range 240 months, which is way beyond the guidelines that would otherwise suggest anywhere between 135 and 168 months. By this, The Chicago judge issued an extra 72 months above the recommended time and attorney Bonjean is definitely dissatisfied with this approach to sentencing. According to Bonjean's Chicago appeal opening briefs, no proper explanation was given by Judge Lyon and Weber for the excessively long sentence. To be more accurate in her own words, Ms. Bonjean stated that the district judge failed to identify the basis for which he upwardly departed 72 months from the applicable guidelines range of 135 to 168 months, except to suggest that it was based on acquitted conduct and the fact that defendants' alleged crimes would be punished more severely under the current guidelines. By mentioning this, Judge Harry Lyon and Weber conceded to violating the important clause where ex post facto laws are expressly forbidden by the United States statute. For you to better understand what Ms. Bonjean means by this, I will explain to you what the term ex post facto means in relation to the law. The term ex post facto law simply refers to a law that retroactively changes the legal consequence of an action or relationship that existed before the enactment of the law. Such laws may criminalize certain actions that were legal at the time they were committed, causing uncertainty in what one can do or not do now with concern of what the future legislators may decide. The law may also suddenly without notice aggravate a crime that was previously less severe and in the process attract a more serious sentence or penalty like the Chicago judge attempted to decide on R. Kelly's case. Ex post facto laws in fact have the power to lift and extend statutes of limitations from previously committed offenses, or even alter the rules of evidence making a conviction more likely than it was back when the action was committed. It is important to note that ex post facto laws are expressly forbidden by the United States Constitution in Article 1, Section 9 and Clause 3 for federal legislation, and in Article 1, Section 10 with respect to state laws. These laws regulate Congress supremacy and cannot be violated most especially by a trial judge what Harry Lyon and Weber is trying to do. And he unknowingly made his illegal move public when he mentioned that he did issue an additional 72 months because the defendant's alleged actions would be punished in a more severe manner according to the current guidelines. 
By saying this, the federal judge made it clear he was operating ex post facto which is highly prohibited in our country. By tackling this matter accurately and with utmost information like Bon Jean has done in her Chicago Appeal Brief submission, she has again proved that indeed she is capable of fighting the injustice being exercised against R. Kelly, and stamping out ignorance of the law from among the federal judges who have proved too blind to see the clauses she is currently bringing to light. Every legal practitioner and of course federal judges too would be expected to have these important clauses on their fingertips, and to have the necessary experience to invoke them whenever they become necessary like Bonjean does. It's rather shocking to see them completely bewildered whenever such scenarios come up. But should we assume that the Chicago judge did not remember that the sovereign nation he serves does not tolerate ex post facto laws or conduct in the DOJ? Or did he simply ignore this with the hope to give R. Kelly a longer sentence than prescribed and get away with it? Perhaps with R. Kelly's previous legal team he would. Certainly not when R. Kelly is being represented by Sharp by Jennifer Bonjean who will read and detail the law for you in broad daylight, leaving you to only fail yourself when the information is right in front of you. According to Jericho Jackson. Lord this is so crazy. Why would a whole Department of Justice attempt to change legislation just to have one man incarcerated? It's all looking so ugly for the government together with the federal judges, and I am confident this situation will be reversed by the appeal court. First the concoction of charges issuing false RICO and Mann Act definitions, and now the assumption of retroactivity which is highly prohibited by our very own constitution. R. Kelly is supposed to be on the outside making music. These guys are playing with fire. According to Anna Manyama. Thank you very much Miss Bonjean for standing up for R. Kelly. Let them all be seen for what they truly are. Thank you again and may God keep on blessing you for making a difference for we black people. Now we know that indeed God created some good people to fight for all black or white no matter the race because we are all the same. We are with you all the way. Patiently we will wait and keep on praying. If you wish to take part in a live interview discussing any of these topics, let us know by sending an email to sashalfnmedia at gmail.com for scheduling. Thank you for watching today's video, a production of LFN Media, giving you another perspective of issues at hand. We make it our business to keep you updated with the truth amidst the cloud of lies the media wants you to believe. It is therefore important to subscribe to this channel, Hit the bell icon and allow all notifications so that you don't miss out whenever we publish a new video.